Hello there and welcome to another video lecture from Architects Academy. Today we are going to learn about T-Cool windows. So here in front of you is a model of a T-Cool window. And if you look at this particular model, what you will see is that this is a window of size from this edge to that edge here. The size is 1.8 meters and the height of this window is 1.6 meters. If you see the window, you will see that it consists of totally three shutters, one, two and three shutters, which are openable type of shutters. And at the top, what you will see is there are ventilators which can open upwards. These are also called as fan lights. So this is a typical window. The number of shutters and the arrangement of the shutters can change as per the dimensions of the window and the type of window selected. Now let us look at the window components. So first what you will see is that the window is consisting of basically two components. One is the frame of the window and the second is going to be the shutters. So the frame of the window is going to consist of these members which I am highlighting. This is the top member. There is a bottom member. There is a vertical member there. Another vertical member here and there is an intermediate member in between. And then there are two more horizontal members across. So this total will constitute the frame of the window. So let us look at the frame of the window more in detail. So I have separated out this frame in this particular model. So what you will see is that there, there are these different components of the frame itself. So the first component which is the component which you see at the top, this is called as the head. The bottom component is called as the sill or sill piece. The two, verti two vertical components here, they are called as the posts. And the central component here, which I am highlighting, is called as the mullion. Similarly, these two intermediate horizontal members are called as transom or transoms. So, what you will see is that the mullion divides the total window into two parts while as the transom divides the window again into two parts but vertically into top and bottom parts. Now these members if you look at these two members one at the top and one at the bottom as we said this is called as the head and this is called as the sill you will see that both these members are projecting outside from the face of the frame here, here, here and here. This projection is roughly about 100 millimeters on all sides. So this projection is called as a horn and this horn or this projection is going to go inside the wall and it is going to help to hold the window properly into the wall. That is the function of the horn. Now let us look at the particular member or the frame of the window. So if I just take this and separate it out from this uh, drawing and view it separately, what you will see is that this vertical post as we call it, call it consists of basically a profile which has been made from a T-cool section. So basically this t cool section was a full section which was like this a rectangular one and out of that what the carpenter has done is he has cut out certain notches inside it. So what you will see is that there is one notch which you can see here which we will call as the uh, rebat. So this is called as the rebat. If you see it from the top this is the rebat. The rebat is meant to hold the shutter. The the size of the rebat, this particular size of the rebat is going to be equal to the thickness of the window shutter while as the other size which you can see here, this size from here to here, this is going to be 12 mm, that's a fixed dimension. Basically what the rebat does is that it holds the shutter 
and it prevents the shutter from going beyond this particular point. So it will stop the shutter here. On the other two sides which you will see here, there are two more notches which you can see here. One more notch here and the other notch here. These are on the opposite side of the rivet and they are called as the plaster notches. So these plaster notches are going to be of a dimension 12 millimeters this way and 12 millimeters this way. The function of these plaster notches is that when we make uh, or when we do the plaster to the walls, that plaster gets tucked inside these plaster notches and goes inside these plaster notches and as a result of that, even if this frame expands or contracts due to moisture content in the atmosphere, we don't see cracks on the face where there is a connection between the plaster and the frame because the plaster has already gone inside the frame. So that is the reason for having these plaster notches. Now what you will see, other thing which you will see at the top is that this particular post has got a projection of cord like this. This is called as a tenon. This tenon is used to connect this particular post to the head and the top and similarly you will see that at the bottom also it is going to have a similar tenon which is going to help to connect the post to the sill piece which is there at the bottom. On the edge of the window what you will see here is a sort of a chamfer design. So this design is totally dependent upon you what type of design you can make for the window. So this was about the post. Now one more thing we'll see about the post is that somewhere in between here you have got another mortise which has been made inside this. This mortise is used to fit this piece what we call as the transom. So the transom gets fitted into this particular mortise which has been made inside the post. So basically what you can see here is that if we separate out all the members of this frame from each other, you will see that they are joined together by means of a tenon mortise joints. So these tenon mortise joints are there everywhere. So if I just pull this up here, if I just move it out here, if I just choose this member and move it out here, you will see that everywhere you will get these tenon mortise, tenon mortise. So as you can see here also if you see from the top you will see that this is a mortise which has been made inside the head and similarly another mortise has been made here in the uh, sill piece also. So what you will see is that this basically all these members are connected together by means of a tenon mortise joint. So that was what we have seen that this is how the frame gets connected to each other. Now let us look at how the shutter is made. So as you, as you know that here we have got basically these shutters. So there are two shutters at the uh, there are the three shutters in the lower part of the window and then there are three ventilators which are there at the top of the window. So let us look at this particular one single shutter and look at how it is connected. So I have got an exploded view of this particular shutter here. So what you can see here is that this particular shutter is made up out of again members, timber members. So if I just move this a little bit away from there to understand it more better. What you will see is that it consists of basically one member which you can see here at the top, one member at the bottom, these two members at the top and the bottom they are going to be called as the rails. This is the top rail, this is the bottom rail and on the side here which you can see here and here these are the styles. So this, this dimension of the style, this uh, width, width wise is 75 mm and if you look at the thickness of this, it is this particular dimension, it is 35 mm. So this particular member which is the style is 75 by 35. In this case also this is 75 by 35. So this really depends upon your design and how much is the width of the window but it will be somewhere between 75 to 100 this dimension 
and the thickness also would be anywhere between 30 to 40 mm. At the top and bottom, as I told you, these are the rails. These rails are again fixed into this, uh, into the styles by means of a tenon mortise joint, which I have not shown, but I think it will be clear because we have seen what is meant by tenon mortise joint. You can also see that this particular member, if you just see carefully, this also has got a sort of a notch made inside it. This notch is going to hold the glass. So if you look at this, this particular glass now is going to fit into that notch. So I'll just try to now move this glass in position. So this is a 5 millimeter thick glass which I've used here. And if I just go and place it here in this notch, what you will see is that this will fit here. So what you can see is that this glass is cut to that particular shape and it is fitted within this notch which has been made inside. Now this glass has to be fixed and therefore to fix the glass what we have are these members which are called as the beading. So these are timber members of so 12mm by 12mm and if I just try to separate out one of these members from this what you will see is that this is a particular member. This member has a dimension of 12 millimeters this way and 12 millimeters this way. And this is made in timber. This will be nailed into this joint. So let us try to just nail the first member here. So just move it here. From here, let us move it here in this point. So you see, first of first of the members has been connected. You will see that this member has been given an angle here at 45 degrees. This is called as a mitre joint. Mitre joint is a joint which is at an angle. This is just done purely for aesthetical purposes. We can have even a vertical joint, but the mitre joint looks be better. So it is like a joint which you make for a picture frame. It is also called as a picture frame joint. Now we will fix the second member now here. So let us go here and let us try to fix the second beading here. Now how do you fix this beading? You just nail it into this. So what you will see is that you can just fix it here. And from the top, that is if I just try to draw a nail here, what will be done is that there will be a nail and this nail will just be placed here like this in between. So there will be a member which is going to come from here and these nails will be fixed here. So there will be not one nail but there will be two or three nails fixed here. And this particular member or the beading is going to be nailed into this notch which is going to be there. Now let us similarly fix both these two members here in the exact position. So let us take these two members. So this is how the carpenter will actually make these members. He will put them into this place. They are also at a, having a 45 degree angle. So finally once this is completed, what you will see is the completed uh, shutter with the glass in between and the beading. Two or three important things which you will notice about this are rather which are important from point of view of understanding is that this beading is being done so that if at all this glass breaks suppose at any time, one can remove this beading and then replace the glass. So that is one of the functions why the beading is there. Another thing which you will notice about the beading is that the beading has been done from the external side. That is, it is on the external side of the window shutter. So this particular shutter now, let us suppose that we make, if we consider this to be the entire shutter, then this shutter is going to come and get fixed into this part. So let us try to just this entire shutter with the glass and the beading and let us just place it here into this notch which we had made for that purpose. So what you will see is that this is going to be the shutter which is going to get fixed and on this side there are going to be hinges. So there are going to be three hinges on this side and similarly for the shutter which is going to get fixed here there are going to be three hinges on this side. Now a similar shutter would fi get fixed here. So very same shutter would get fixed here 
this not so we'll have a two shutter window now what has been shown here is as if these two are parallel to each other well really speaking they are not like that so what you'll see is that this line is a vertical line but in actual reality when we make this window we slightly give it an angle or a sort of a chamfer here so what you will see is that this part is made like this so this is how it is actually done though this has not been shown in the model but remember that, that there is a small notch made inside this so that one shutter gets fixed properly to the other shutter so these are the two shutters similarly another shutter will get fixed here so let us try to go here and just fit one more shutter here so now the hinges will come on this side so i'll just take this and just, uh, copy it here and just take this shutter now what you will realize is that when making the drawing so I have made it exactly equal so all the shutters are of the same size so these three shutters have been placed here similarly on the top here you will see that we will be placing the ventilators so you see that these ventilators have been placed here at the top now how do these uh, ventilators move or how do they function so you know that these ventilators or these shutters these are going to open outside so let me just see if I can do that See, this is how the window is going to open not exactly like this actually it should be somewhere here so I'm just try to see if I can um, move it like this see, this is the way that the window is going to open out okay side hung this is called as a side hung window and same way if we try to view, visualize how this ventilator or fan light as we call it if it is going to open so what i'll do is i'll try to uh, open this fan light similarly oh, sorry so this is our fan light and we want to open it so this is the top hung type of an arrangement We try to open it like this. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry. So, see, this is how it is going to open out. So, it is going to be hinged at the top here, and this ventilator is going to open up like this at the top. So, this is how the arrangement of this window is. So I hope this uh, thing is clear to you. Let us first, now let us again quickly just go through the various terms and members which are there. So we had seen here, this particular member is called as the head, this is the sill, this is the post, this is the post. This particular vertical member is called as the mullion and these two members here are called as the transom. So these are some of the new terms which we have learned here as far as T-code windows are concerned. So I hope this is clear to you. If you have any difficulties, you can get in touch with me again to understand. Thank you.